Over the last 48 hours, there has been a firestorm on social media with the recent leaking of the decision that the Supreme Court of the United States potentially overturned Roe versus Wade as a Christian. This is so exciting. This is great ground that we're getting in terms of finally getting rid of abortion and ending abortion. But at the same time, it's important to note that this one decision isn't going to change. Oh my goodness, now there's no more abortion. We're all good. I live in Canada. This is not really going to change a whole lot except momentum maybe. People here are going to get more excited and more eager about the mission and the cause. Maybe that could happen, but at the same time, look, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Interestingly enough, on social media, I've been seeing a lot of people freaking out about this. Obviously, it makes sense. Like, people don't like, you know, their abortions be taken away. We know this. We, we, we've we experienced this before. If you've ever had a conversation with a pro-choice person, you know it's a heavily emotional issue for both sides. For me, as a Christian, it's a very emotional because I believe it's a child in the womb that was created in the image of God that's fearfully and wonderfully made and that child is being taken apart that's being killed in the womb for the sake of convenience for a pro-abortion person I, I suppose they're looking at it and they're saying well look this is my life and now it's inconvenienced by this child or this trauma that is now reverberated because now I have this child and and all this sort of thing and and so you understand okay it's a very emotional issue and a lot of like names are thrown around like you're evil for doing this or you're taking away women, women's rights what I'm interested in where they're getting their foundation for saying that this is wrong and this is right and this is a right and this is not a right because from a secular worldview we're just stardust bumping into stardust we're just primordial ooze that evolved over millions and millions of years in that worldview there is no right there is no wrong our rights come from god that's where they come from and in early on in the scriptures we learn that we don't have the right to kill somebody that's in the ten commandments so it's pretty quite cut and dry when we when we look at that. The first tweet here is from Ethan Klein. Some of you might be familiar with Ethan Klein. He has a YouTube channel, H3H3. He says, women are officially second-class citizens in America now with Roe versus Wade overturned. The very basic right to control your body is lost. It's a scary time to be a woman in America. And I'll support you with everything that I can. This is this idea that it's my body, my choice. We've talked about this on the channel before, but it's not your body. It's a different body. It's a different child, not only from a biblical perspective can we see that okay look god says that this is a you know a, he knit us in in our mother's womb like we weren't just part of our mother we were you know distinct you know worthy being um but also from a scientific perspective we, we see that okay look different organs are form, forming different hands and toes and 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 all these sorts of things so a different blood type often we're, we're not the same as our mother just because we rely on our mother doesn't take away our right to live radical jesus says overturning roe versus wade is going to get people killed it's a fact. This is really interesting to me. The fact that radical Jesus is saying this more like false Jesus or, you know, Jesus made in our own image. This is just idolatry. But when we look at this, what are they saying? People are going to get killed. Well, it's because the, often the argument is, well, if you make abortion illegal, they'll just go to back alleys and they're going to get, you know, killed and that kind of thing. And, you know, that idea is often perpetrated as well with, from Natasha here. You cannot ban abortions. You can only ban safe abortions. It's a misunderstanding because there are no safe abortions. That's the truth of it. And that might be hard for you guys to hear, but it is, it's just, the, it's the truth of the situation because somebody is always the victim, the child, the child is the victim. It's not this, I like a lot of people portray it, like a bunch of white guys getting together and trying to dominate women and, and domineer over women and taking away their rights and putting them back in the dark ages. It's like, it just isn't what it's about. It's a total straw man argument. Are there like one or two people that are like really misogynist? misogynistic and they're like yeah because women shouldn't speak or women should like women should be at the you know it's like okay maybe but like that's not the majority of people and that's not who i am that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the fact that there is a little child in the womb that has dignity and worth and des deserves to live and even the argument that people say oh well that child will have a hard life i've talked to numerous people in the foster care system i've talked to numerous people that have had a hard lives and that could have been aborted very easily or in the exact kind of situation where that often happens. 
You talk to them, they're glad they were alive. They're glad that their mother chose life, right? And so the mother doesn't have the right to make that decision. Father doesn't have the right to make that decision either. This is supposedly from a reverend, guys. As a pro-choice pastor, I've always believed that a patient's room is way too small for a woman or doctor in the United States government. I'll always fight to protect a woman's right to choose, and that will never change. Look, <laughs> guys, as a pastor you'd hope that you'd stand on the word of God and you wouldn't cower to secular and worldly ideologies and the wisdom of the wise in order to gain popularity points. But but here we are. It often happens. This this is so many retweets. This is so many, you know, well, a lot of quote tweets, but maybe some of the people are pushing back on it, but like 15,000 retweets. He's getting a lot of popularity from this kind of idea that he wants to be the nice pastor, the one that's for women, right? It's a complete lie. It's a complete lie because abortion does not help women. Abortion is the destruction of little women within the womb. Why, do, why is that so hard for us to understand? That is an important question. Why is it so hard for us to understand? And there's a biblical answer to this. It says, this is the verdict. This is in John 3.19. It says, this is the judgment or the verdict. Uh, the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than light because their works were evil. It's important that we not just judge those who are kind of in this state of blindness, spiritual blindness. They're not understanding. They're not seeing that this is wicked. Uh, we, we can't just judge them without actually recognizing that we were in the exact same space that they were, right? Like we were in this exact same space <clears throat> of spiritual blindness where we rebelled against God, where we were in our sin, where we loved our sin, that we fought to protect our sin. But you know what the gospel does? And this is why I'm so passionate about this issue, because I think it's not just about, oh, like we should help more babies live because I think that's a big topic too. But I want babies and mothers to live eternally, not just for this life, but for the life to come. And that can only come through the gospel. That's the big message of Christianity. That's the whole reason I exist on this platform. It's not just to say abortion is bad, you know, whatever, like uh, LGBT is the same. Like I, I, I couldn't, that's not what it's about. It's about that we could all find grace and freedom and restoration and new life because Christ is that good and that gracious in taking the penalty that we deserve for our sin against God. He died on that cross. He rose again, defeating sin and death. And we are called to repent, which means turn from sin and put our faith in him. And that is the good news. That's the good news. Not that we can do n nice things and we can, you know, make up for the bad things that we've done in our life and then we can go to heaven. No, no, that we can't. We can't. And maybe you've had an abortion. Maybe you regret it or you feel guilty or maybe you're starting to feel those feelings of, of guilt and shame. I just want you to know that all is not lost. Yes, your child is gone, but yet Christ is good and he is gracious and he wants to save you and he wants you to see your baby again. That's the grace and that he has for all of us. And so I, I just want encouragement for you guys as you go. This issue is, is important. And so don't let somebody try to convince you that you don't have a voice in it, whether you're a man or you're old or you're young or whatever it is, or you've never been pregnant or whatever else it is, you have something to say. And that's important, right? At the same time, I just want to encourage you guys to be gracious in the way that you're conducting yourselves online. It's a hostile environment, man. A lot of the pro-choice folks are going to want to call you names. They are. They just going to want to call you names. I've had it happen. I've experienced it. It's not the end of the world. You won't die, you know, but continue to proclaim the truth. Obviously, you can't touch on everything in one video, but I have done other videos on this topic. If you're interested in checking them out, feel free to head to the playlist on my channel and click on the topic of abortion. For those of you who support me on Patreon. Thank you so much. It's because of your support that I can continue to make these videos that I can risk getting canceled because that doesn't matter because you guys support me so I can proclaim God's truth without fear or much fear and trepidation because I have that support and I appreciate you guys prayers in all this. I'm going to be praying for you. Stay strong and I'll see you next time.